This is the Weekly Digest, a government information agency program that keeps you informed on what the administration has been doing that will create a better environment for citizens. I encourage you to stay tuned. In this week's presentation for the period May 16 to 22, 2015, national budget preparations well underway. Ministers take their oath of office, significant quantity of oil found in Guyana, and focus placed on coconut in the region. Guyana is set to join a group of oil-producing nations, as news of this was made public by ExxonMobil, that it has found a deposit of a significant amount of oil in the Stabrook block, 120 nautical miles offshore Guyana. According to information released from ExxonMobil, the deposit was discovered in one of the two wells it dug, in the Lisa 1 drill site, which realized more than 295 feet of high-quality oil-bearing sandstone. The well was spot on March 5, 2015, and the well data will be analyzed in the coming months to better determine the full resource potential. It was safely drilled to 17,825 feet in the Starbrook block, which is 6.6 .6 million acres, the statement noted. In the released statement, President of ExxonMobil Exploration Company, Stephen Greenlee, said, he was encouraged by the results of the first well on the Starbrook block and over the coming months will work to determine the commercial viability of the discovered resource as well as evaluate other resource potential on the block. Guyana has been identified by several surveying companies as one of the world's greatest untapped potential sources for hydrocarbons. Several weeks ago, the company had announced that hydrocarbon was discovered and that testing was ongoing to determine if there was commercial quantity. SO Exploration and Production Company Limited Guyana drilled the well Lisa 1 prospect on the Starbrook block using the drill ship the Deepwater Champion. Members of the governing party, a Partnership for National Unity, Alliance for Change, APNU plus AFC, pledged their full commitment to the development of the country as they took their oath of office. Prime Minister and First Vice President Moses Nagamutu were among the first of several ministers of cabinet of the APNU AFC government to take their oath of office before President David Granger on May 15. I am not uh, um, holding a substantive line portfolio because my function as Prime Minister would place me as Chairman of the Cabinet and I will have some uh, kind of liaison, supervisory role of the entire Cabinet to see that we bring together the legislative agenda. Then I'm leader of the House, of the government business in the House. So I will uh, be fully occupied, but I will pay special attention within my ministerial um, outfit to information and constitutional reform. And those are two big areas because we had promised the Guyanese people that we would have constitutional reforms. So we, I pay special attention to that area. The others who took the oath of office were Minister of State of the Ministry of Presidency, Attorney at Law, Joseph Harmon, Abna Ali, Minister of Social Cohesion, Ronald Bolkan, Minister of Communities, Carl Greenwich, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cathy Hughes, Minister of Tourism, Winston Jordan, Minister of Finance, and Valda Lawrence, the Minister of Social Protection. There's several things that I want to get started with. The first thing is a proper marketing uh, plan and a marketing uh, program for Guyana. Um, I know from my personal experience that many, many people come to this lovely country. They have a great time, but too many people still don't know where we are. So in terms of marketing the destination, uh, in terms of increasing airlift so we can get uh, flights to Guyana at an affordable price, it still is kind of expensive so for some sectors of the marketplace to come to Guyana. Uh, the other thing I want to look at that I feel strongly about is the hospitality training school. We have a great investment, the private sector has made you know, strong investments, but we certainly need to up our level of service. And it's not only in the hospitality industry, but I think generally in all the government offices. You know, We want to be able to look after people well and to be able to look after other Guyanese and tourists to Guyana. Meanwhile, Dr. George Norton was appointed Guyana's new Minister of Public Health. David Patterson was appointed Minister of Public Infrastructure. Dr. Rupert Rupnarain, the Minister of Education. Basil Williams, the Minister of Legal Affairs and Attorney General. Simona Brooms, the Minister within the Ministry of Social Protection. Dr. Karen Cummings, the Minister within the Ministry of Public Health. Annette Ferguson, the Minister within the Ministry of Public Work. And Nicolette Henry, Minister within the Ministry of Education. It's going to be a massive task. I mean, education is for, you've heard President, President Granger say that, you know, to make Guyana an education nation, it's going to be a big challenge. 
because I mean from nursery to university everything needs fixing because everything is broken you know we have to focus on the teachers which is key um, we have to ensure that we have highly motivated energized teachers in the classrooms this to me is a key without that we'll go nowhere on May 22nd, the second Vice President and Minister of Public Security, Cameron Ramjitan, was sworn in along with other ministers, including Minister of Governance, Raphael Trotman, Minister of Indigenous People, Sidney Alicock, Minister of Business and Investment, Dominique Gaskin, Minister of Agriculture, Noel Holder, Minister of Citizenship, Winston Felix, Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous People, Valerie Garrido Lowe, Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Keith Scott, and Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Jaipal Sharma. With the new Minister of Finance sworn in on May 20, work has started on the 2015 national budget and this will be fast-tracked to bring about the budget at the earliest possible time. The newly appointed Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, has already begun extensive consultations with high-level ministry staffers with a view to completing and presenting the national 2015 budget. The Finance Minister said that the groundwork has already commenced. As you know, I inherited some of the work already from uh, the, free, the previous administration, they had already prepared somewhat of a budget based on their priorities. Um, I'm having a review of uh, that and trying at the same time to incorporate our priorities, especially the 100-day uh, agenda. I've spoken to most of my senior staff, Stats Bureau, Compton General's Department, the other uh, departments in the ministry, Bank of Guyana, and they've all been giving me an indication of where we're at, okay? And so now I'm trying to put that in some kind of a framework to get an, a preliminary assessment of the state of the economy and uh, how we ourselves can begin to uh, set our own targets for this truncated, um, uh, this truncated fiscal year. And at the same time, looking ahead, how we can start framing the, <clears throat> what we will have to do to frame the budget in 2016. The outside date for the National Budget's presentation to the National Assembly is some three months after the convening of the 11th Parliament, around the end of 2015 August. The Finance Minister is optimistic, however, that this process will be completed long before then. Newly appointed Minister of Tourism, Kathy Hughes, believes that there is much more room for growth in the sector and in this regard will be bringing a number of initiatives to enhance its development. Minister Hughes said she is looking to push forward with several strategies that should further move the industry and put Guyana more on the map as a must-see destination. The tourism minister said that one of the first things that she will seek to develop is a proper marketing plan and a marketing program for Guyana. I think it's a sector that we can really, really grow. So I am looking forward to doing all I can to push the sector forward. Do you have a particular project or area in mind which you want to work on specifically? Well, there's several things that I want to get started with. The first thing is a proper marketing uh, plan and a marketing uh, program for Guyana. Um, I know from my personal experience that many, many people come to this lovely country, they have a great time, but too many people still don't know where we are. So in terms of marketing the destination, uh, in terms of increasing airlift so we can get uh, flights to Guyana at an affordable price, it still is kind of expensive so for some sectors of the marketplace to come to Guyana. Another area of major focus for the new minister is the tourism and hospitality training school. We have a great investment, the private sector has made you know, strong investments, but we certainly need to up our level of service. And it's not only in the hospitality industry, but I think generally in all the government offices. You know, We want to be able to look after people well and to be able to look after other Guyanese and tourists to Guyana. Strengthening relationships with other Caribbean community, CARICOM states, will also be a priority, especially as part of an agenda of multi-destination marketing. The new health minister will be placing focus on training for health care professionals in order that a higher level of care is delivered to Guyanese. Dr. George Norton, who was recently sworn in as Minister of Public Health, has committed to further improvement of the health sector. One of his major focus areas is that of the need for more practitioners who are specialized in various areas of health. He explained that the reason why the local health care system comprises a large portion of international health practitioners is because there aren't enough Guyanese who are specialized in high-demand areas of health. 
This, he said, can be addressed through more training and scholarships. The reason why we have Africans, Indians, Koreans, uh, you, you name it, Chinese, all of you know, non Guyanese working here in Guyana in those special Cubans in those specialist areas because we're not specializing our people. Okay. Myself and colleagues who were from my batch, we've been specialists for over three decades and we're still around. And I am certain that had we trained more specialists, you know, giving them the, the necessary scholarships and so on, we would have had much more Guyanese in charge of different health sectors. We've also got to look at areas where we do not have the specialist area. You've got, you know, the, the neurosurgeons, you've got the nephrologists, you've got the medical psychologists, you need more psychiatrists, you know, and those are the areas we've got to concentrate on, at least to have concentrating where our three major, that is Burbies, Esequibo and Demerara is concerned, we've got to have specialist areas in those, in, in, in specialist personnel in those, in those particular areas. The minister stressed his administration's dedication towards addressing these and other issues in the sector, as well as the improvement of the country's healthcare system as a whole. The Independence Eve customary flag raising ceremony has been encapsulated into a wreath laying ceremony honoring those who have been deemed instrumental in the fight for Guyana's independence. This remembrance observance hosted at the Independence Arch is part of the new APNU AFC administration's objective of paying homage to the valiant men and women who have struggled for Guyana's independence. This event caters for two minutes of silence for those eminent men and women, including former presidents LFS Burnham and Chetty Jagan and Peter Degar. This will be followed by a military reval and the laying of eight wreaths. The wreaths will be laid by the head of state and representatives of the trade union movement and from women, youths and political parties. To facilitate this event, there was the restoration of the Independence Arch and a massive cleanup activity of its surroundings and other parts of Georgetown. The National Independence Arch was donated to the people of Guyana from the Demerara Bauxite Company, Demba, commemorating Guyana's independence from Great Britain in 1966. The structure consists of three tubes made of aluminum from Guyana's bauxite mounted on a quartz base. So, as part of this whole thrust to make independence something for people to remember, as part of what he has requested is that the entire Georgetown be cleaned. And you may have noticed that there are excavators and tractors and people cleaning around. Um, BK International has undertaken to spearhead the cleaning aspects of the city, assisted, of course, in collaboration with the mayor and city council and the prison services of Guyana. At the arch itself, BK are doing the restoration works and Cummins Electrical are providing services for the restoration of the lights which once uh, were active there. So we have a wide cross-section of community businesses that are coming on board and participating. We have Harris Paints. They're providing paints for whatever we need to get done. But the objective, according to the request from His Excellency, is that the city should be restored to what it once was, and that is a garden city and a clean one. Guyana became an independent nation on May 26, 1966. It was a glorious day for the nation as thousands gathered at the National Park, formerly known as the Queen Elizabeth Park, to witness the golden arrowhead fly above an independent Guyana. Local stakeholders and international bodies, including the European Union, the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, and the International Trade Center, have deliberated on the sustainable development of the coconut industry in Guyana and the Caribbean. A stakeholder forum to reposition the coconut industry in the Caribbean for sustainable development took place recently and was considered over a two-day period. Participants examined the range of value-added products, whilst the stakeholders considered its implementation. It is important that during this day and a half engagement of developing a roadmap for market development, we continue to propel at an accelerated rate. This is because time is money, and while we in the Caribbean are still largely on the runway, 
we were finalizing roadmap after years, countries that fall out of the ambit of CARICOM continue to penetrate the coconut markets worldwide. He charged the gathering to bring out projects that the scientists never thought about before. Meanwhile, EU Ambassador to Guyana, Robert Kopecki, pointed out that coconut oil and milk have been a boon worldwide. Not to be exporting air from Georgetown in containers or from Guyana to the Dominican Republic. Because if you, if you export coconuts and you put them in the container, there is a lot of non-used space. If you have a factory here, you open them, you just export the juice for them to packing, etc. It's way more efficient and then way more uh, able to compete with other big players in the world. Coconut is very much in demand and Guyana has already gotten a lot of markets for this crop. The country has already seen byproducts being made from it. With the demand for coconut and coconut products increasing, good days are ahead for this industry. The Guyana Tourism Authority, GTA, insists that its statistics regarding visitor arrivals in Guyana are accurate, debunking claims peddled that they are false. According to Director of the Guyana Tourism Authority, Injanat Harold Singh, the figures released were derived from the Management Information System for Tourism, MIST, that analyzes data from the embarkation disembarkation cards provided by Guyana's immigration to all incoming outgoing passengers. According to the UNWTO, a visitor is classified as a tourist or overnight visitor if his or her trip includes an overnight stay or a same-day visitor, which could also be called an excursionist. A Guyanese who migrated and returned to Guyana for business, holiday, wedding, funeral, etc., is a visitor. So Harold Singh described the management information system as foolproof and one that was designed directly by the Caribbean Tourism Authority on the United Nations World Trade Organization definition. Good statistics must be collected in accordance with agreed international standards using appropriate methods for data collection, processing, and dissemination. And that's what basically missed about it is, um, has been designed by one of the most credible agencies, and that's the Caribbean Tourism Organization for Use uh, in its 34 member countries. So we are not the only ones using MIST. Several other CARICOM countries are using uh, this MIST program. Based upon the data provided by the MIS system, tourist arrivals to Guyana have doubled over the past 12 years up to April 2015. Visitor arrivals went up by 7%, with a total of 66,495 visitors arriving in Guyana, as against 62,131 arriving during the same period last year. The liberalization of the telecommunications sector is set to become a reality with the new administration. Newly sworn in Minister of State Joseph Harmon has indicated that the new APNU plus AFC administration intends to put on the front burner the passage of the telecommunications bill in the 11th Parliament. Harmon explained that the bill was on the verge of conclusion prior to the prorogation of the last Parliament. The bill, which was first introduced in 2011 and revised in 2013, was at the level of the Select Committee in the 10th Parliament, addressing concerns including those of the industry's stakeholders. We believe that the, the telecommunications sector should be liberalized. In the 10th Parliament, we were working very hard to ensure that can happen, that that becomes law. In fact, I believe when the Parliament was prorogued, we were on the verge of completing the work in the Special Select Committee um, for the entire package of, of, um, of legislation to ensure that can happen. The Telecommunications Bill seeks to create a competitive regime in the telecommunications sector. It provides for an open, liberalized and competitive sector that will be attractive to new market entrants and investors while preserving the activities of the current participants. By creating this competitive environment for telecommunications, the bill is expected to result in greater choice, better quality of service and lower prices for consumers. We have to really move this sector forward. It is important not just to, to business, 
but to our school children, to the people in the education system, so that we can have faster band, uh, a better bandwidth service, we can have faster um, communication um, with the rest of the world. It is, it is, it is, um, it is something that is so um, unusual when foreigners come and they want to, to access the internet. Sometimes the internet is so slow that it really prevents them from doing business in the way they want to do it. So in, in, in our administration, that is something we will aggressively push to have. The bill also specifically addresses the expansion of telecommunication networks and services into unserved and underserved areas through the institution of a new universal access, universal service program in an effort to further national, regional, social and economic development. And with those features, we have come to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. But before we go, here's a repeat of the highlights. National budget preparations well underway. Ministers take their oath of office, significant quantity of oil found in Guyana, and focus placed on coconut in the region. Please note that Weekly Digest and other government information can be found on our website www.gina.gov.gy or you can send us your comments and suggestions at ginagovgy at gmail.com. You can also read our newspaper, The Guyanese, online at theguyanese.gy. Join us again next week as we highlight more of the government's programs and policies that are aimed at enhancing the lives of citizens. I am Shanta Goberdan. Do have a safe week ahead. Goodbye.